I think that as a man, your happiness comes from feeling respected over feeling loved. And the reason perhaps you're happy now is because you have more respect for yourself because of the decisions you're making Amen. and you have self-respect. Yeah. And I think that a lot of men, even if they have self-respect, if nobody else respects them, they're struggling. I have no interest in being happy. I wake up and say, how can I be proud of myself? What can I achieve that makes me proud of myself? How can I do things that make other people respect me and are proud of me? How do I have a day which I complete when I come home? The woman who's in my house says, wow, there's no man like you. How do I live a life so my children look at me and go, dad's a superhero. How do I make my mother call me and say, I've never, I couldn't possibly be more proud of you. I have duties to complete. I live, I have to live the exact same life regardless of how I feel. So me, for me, happiness is not a good indicator on how life should be lived. But happiness to me is a super interesting concept because when people come to me and say, I'm not happy, I say, why should you be happy? They're like, what do you mean? I was like, who told you you should be happy all the time without working for it? Happiness is at the top of a mountain somewhere. You ain't been anywhere. You haven't even climbed it. Nobody cares about men being happy. We talk about women being happy. We want children to be happy. If you look at a full-grown man on Christmas morning, he's smiling because his wife is smiling. He's smiling because his children are smiling. Nobody even buys him anything. What do they buy the dad? Socks? Nobody cares about men being happy. So why do you as a man care about you being happy? That's how you're going to fall into these traps. I'm a very, I'm a very content person. I live a fantastic life. I'm not miserable or depressed. I'm not sad ever. But I don't wake up and go, I want to be happy today. No, sir. I wake up and say, okay, things must be done. And those things will be completed regardless of how I feel. Regardless of how I feel. You can lock me in a dungeon for an unknown amount of time in, a Roma in Romania. And I will still complete as many push-ups as I can possibly do. In the dark, by myself. What else am I going to do? Sit there and be sad? Happy or sad? The push-ups must be done. It's called duty, it's called honor, it's called pride. So I'm asking you why you don't have them. You could be a genuine force for good in the world. And you know what's funny? The funniest thing, the most ironic thing about all of this, is that if you don't prioritize happiness and you prioritize feeling proud of yourself, you end up happy by extension. I'm happy because I'm proud of myself because I have a fantastic life and mansions and supercars and money, most famous man in the world, thousands of love letters a week from beautiful women. Of course I'm happy, but I didn't ever choose to try and be happy. If I would have chosen to try and be happy, I would have never ended up happy. I don't want a woman to ever go through anything bad in her life. I think a man should go through it for her and protect her. Because I think that's how she's her best self as a woman. But I think to be your best self as a man is the absolute opposite. And when someone emails me and says, this has happened to me, I'm like, good. No, what do you mean good? It's terrible. How else are you going to become important? How else are you going to find endless fire to get up and struggle in the face of the competition that's out here in the world. How else are you ever, you're gonna do all that with a nice cushy life? If any man's honest with himself, think about the biggest transformative stages in your life. Think about the times you got the most work done. It was a bad part of your life. You were heartbroken or, you know, you lost a house or broke or whatever. That's when you did shit. When everything was fine, the, the mortgage is paid, dinner's on time. It's kind of doop de doop de doo Little by little, do a little bit of work, do a little bit of relax. But the big events come from trauma. This is it. So it's a cheat code. It's a cheat code to climb the mountain. So when I get a message from whoever, and he goes, my wife left me, I'm devastated. I say, I understand. I completely understand how hard it can be to lose a woman that you've given your entire life to. And you've been done so many nice things. And then because of one thing you did, her innate and absolutely insane level of ungratefulness has turned her bitter and she now talks to you like she hates you over one thing you've done after thousands of efforts showing how dedicated you are to her. And even now that you're prepared to die for her, she doesn't give a shit about you. I understand that pain. But my answer is good. It's still good. Now take all of that pain instead of emailing me and this. And then you're going to become the kind of person that women don't need. And you win. I think everybody on the planet has something to prove. If you walk through life and feel like you have nothing to prove, then you're a loser. If you wake up each day and go, I don't owe anybody anything, I don't have to prove anything to anybody, then you are a loser because you are absolutely not being correct. You must prove yourself to other people. You must prove yourself to your bloodline as we just as we just discussed. You must prove yourself to God. God hates the lazy. He can't stand them. If he gives you all these genetic dispositions and these natural God-given gifts, if you have two arms and two legs and you can think and you're not trying your absolute best, that's the reason you're not lucky. He doesn't like you. 
He likes the people which show him the beauty of his own creation. He likes to give somebody building blocks and them to build something amazing. It's the best thing about being a man, you have to build who you are, right? You can decide if you want to be a funny comedian or a musician or a kickboxer world champion or fight the matrix. You can decide whatever you want to be. God loves to see that. Those people, for some reason, seem to be enormously lucky, right? The person who goes, I don't have to prove anything to God. I don't owe all of my ancestors any effort. You know, for 5,000 years, people were dodging saber-tooth tigers and catching the plague and running from Genghis Khan. I don't owe them anything. I don't owe them a thing because I want to play video games. These people are losers. I wake up every day with something to prove. I have hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm in fantastic shape, four times world champion, fighting the Matrix out here by myself. More. I will have to be braver. I must try harder. I, all I do is prove myself. So when I hear people go, I don't have nothing to prove, then you're a loser. Peasants have never felt like they needed to prove anything. But kings felt like they needed to go and conquer land. Isn't that co it's coincidental that the king, who already had it all, felt like he needed to go to some far-flung land and conquer it and take it and prove he's the king. But the peasants, oh, I don't have to prove nothing to nobody. You're a loser then. You're a dummy. I absolutely and utterly completely have everything to prove to everybody all of the time. That's who I am. I will prove anything to anybody. If I sit and say X, I will prove it. Happiness is the number one thing that must be earned. And I'll tell you that my happiness is based on very real world achievements. I couldn't be happy if I was broke. I couldn't be happy if I was obese. I couldn't be happy if I was lonely. I couldn't be happy if I wasn't respected. I couldn't be happy if I couldn't whoop a dude's ass. I couldn't be happy in those scenarios. So I made sure none of them scenarios came true. I have earned my happiness via hard work. It's the top of a mountain which I have climbed. I deserve it. I deserve to go to sleep with a smile on my face. Just that's what I can deserve. And every single guy who hasn't got it probably doesn't deserve it. The universe is very giving and very fair. People seem to think that the world is on unfair and those are all the same people who tell themselves they're unlucky i actually believe the opposite i believe the universe is a very giving place i believe god is a very giving being and that thing the world all in all generally balances out and is pretty fair if you're the kind of person who deserves a good life and works their ass off and genuinely wants it and tries very hard guess what you get 99 percent of the time a good life and if you're the kind of person who doesn't really deserve it, slaps three days a week, a little bit lazy, snakes his friends, talks behind people back, blah, 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 guess what? Your life ain't all that good. The universe is pretty fair and pretty balanced. I've yet to meet somebody who gets up every day, does what they're supposed to do, works hard, goes to the gym, then goes to work, does their best, makes their money, looks after it, is sensible, doesn't blow it, etc., etc. who then fails. I I've never met anybody who fails when they do all the right things. Mm. The universe is a very fair and giving place all in all. There are very few exceptions to that. So when when I see somebody who doesn't have the success they want, especially when I see, let's say, a group of people who don't have the success they want, there's no way you're all exceptions to that rule. You may want something, but you certainly don't deserve it, and that's why you don't have it. You shouldn't wake up and say, how happy am I today? How does that affect how I act? That's not how I operate. I wake up and say, what must be done? What will allow me to be proud of myself? What will allow me to achieve? And those things will be done regardless of how I feel. And those are how, that's how the most successful people on earth all operate. The most successful people on earth don't only do things because they feel happy about doing them. If you never make a mark on the world, then you effectively never existed. And when you're gone, nobody will care. And that's very important because you have a duty to your ancestors and you have a duty to God. So you must make a choice. And this is genuine choice for you people at home. Do you want to live in obscurity forever and be invisible and not matter and have an easier life? I would argue that it's not easier because in your heart and in your soul, you're going to feel guilty knowing you could have been something you're not. Or do you want to try your absolute best and struggle and suffer every day of your life, paying the rent for all of the amazing things around you? We pay endless rent. We pay rent for our bodies. We pay rent for our relationships. We pay rent to keep our kids. We pay rent to keep our business. We pay rent to keep our freedom. Every single day is work to pay the rent. It's absolutely never ending. And you have to make that choice. So if you have a pen and paper in front of you, you need to decide. Do you want to be invisible? with a lower rent bill or do you want to be important and work hard and suffer to make sure that the rent is paid it's a choice you must make and it's binary and you must be extremely dedicated towards the decision you finally make i refuse to accept that there are people out there who cannot become happy contented individuals i refuse to accept we live in a world where god is creating people who no matter how hard they work and how good their life becomes can't be happy i don't accept that i accept that the universe is a very giving place and that god loves all of us and if you try your best and you work hard you can become a better person the beauty of life as a man is to be great so you have to sit here and ask yourself do you want to be a happy loser that's insignificant nobody knows you exist women don't respect you men don't respect you nobody cares if you live or die but you get to smile all the time or do you want to be one of the most important people on the planet with a little bit of stress. 
Alternatively, you can go out there in the world, try and implement your mark on the world, work hard, try to get rich, more money, more problems. You can try and start a business, the stress of that. You can lose your girlfriend because all you're doing is working. This is a new level of stress, a new level of trauma, but at least you'll be a somebody at the end of it. As a man, there is no easy life. Your life is not about being easy. Your life is not about being happy. Your life is always going to be difficult. All of the pain you feel, all of the sadness you feel, you're supposed to feel as a man, and you have two effective binary choices. You either go through the suffering and go through the trauma and go through the hardship it takes to be a man of value, or you suffer eternity as a nobody. There's two ways to suffer. You either suffer as a somebody or you suffer as a perpetual and forever nobody. 